All right, looks like we've got Algebra 2, Lecture 110, 111, uh, State Standard OAS A2A11. The student will determine the number and types of solutions of quadratic equations using the discriminant. So let's talk about what that means for just a second. Uh, we've been using the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations for the last week or so. And we're going to determine the number and types of solutions of a quadratic equation using what we call the discriminant. And the discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. Here's the quadratic formula. X is equal to the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. All of this over 2A as long as AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero where A, B, and C are going to be some real numbers. Okay? And we plug in A, B, and C into this formula and that will generate the solutions of any given quadratic equation. That's what we've been doing. The discriminant is part of this. It's this part right here, b squared minus 4ac. The part underneath the radical is called the discriminant, and it will tell us what types of solutions we have. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let me see if I can get my board to, to work with the pen. I tried to do this earlier, and it wouldn't work. Let's, yeah, let me give this a little try. Right there, that part is the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. Here's how it works. I have a new board, by the way. Yay. Um, if b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, is greater than zero, when you see something that says it's greater than zero, all that means is it's positive. Okay. So if b squared minus 4ac is positive, if it's greater than zero, then there are two real solutions. Okay, so they're going to ask you, the question is going to be, how many real solutions are there for the given quadratic equation? There's going to be two real solutions if the discriminant is positive. If the discriminant is equal to zero, so you're going to plug B here, A here, and C here, and do this arithmetic. If it's exactly equal to zero, then there's going to be one real solution. So if the discriminant is positive, there are two real solutions. If the discriminant is negative, then there are, I'm sorry, if the discriminant is zero, there's one real solution. If the discriminant is negative, then there are two imaginary solutions. So think about that. If you think about all three of these cases, they'll make sense. If the square root of a negative number comes into play, that's going to involve imaginary numbers. And if it's plus or minus, that means a positive imaginary number and a negative imaginary number. Okay, and So that, that's what we're going to be doing over the next couple of days, is just determining the numbers and types number and types of solutions of quadratic equations, and we're going to be using the discriminant to do that. Here's our three things that we'll keep in mind. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Just barely touch this board that marks. It's very, very sensitive. Well, let's take a look here. Not going to be able to. Uh, state the number, in, the number and types of solutions of the following quadratic equations. And it gives us some quadratic equations. Now look up here. Let me get my pen. I want the number and types of solutions for this equation. Now look up here. And it's not set equal to zero. And remember, the quadratic equation is good only when your quadratic equation is set equal to zero. The quadratic formula will find values if this is set equal to zero. Well, this one very first one is not set equal to zero, it's set equal to 10. But we can take care of that very easily by just subtracting 10 from both sides. If I can get my board to work. Yay! That puts it in that form. We have 9m squared plus 6m plus 1 is equal to zero. And now here's the situation we're looking at. A is 9, B is 6, positive 6, and C is positive 1. So we're going to plug A, B, and C into the discriminant. The discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. So 
So just substituting these in, b is 6, so that's 6 squared minus 4, that's a constant, times a, which is 9, times c, which is positive 1. And so I have 6 squared minus 36. That's 36 minus 36, isn't it? That's 0. If our discriminant is 0, there's only one real solution. If the discriminant is zero, then there is only one real solution, and that would be our answer right there. To do one real solution. It would be a multiple choice scenario, and that's what you'd be looking for. One real solution. So there we go. We put our quadratic equation in a, in, and we set it equal to zero. And then we were able to use a, b, and c, those are the coefficients of our terms, into the discriminant. And from there, we determined the number of real solutions. Now, let's do another one. Uh, it's very similar to that one. I'm going to set this equal to 0 by adding 5. Once again, I notice it's not set equal to 0, so I have to do that first. Get rid of that little box there. There we go. This will yield 9b squared plus 6b plus 3 is equal to 0. And now we are ready. Let's see if I can scooch this. I'll bet I can't. Of course I can't. I wonder if I can erase that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to plug in A, B, and C into the discriminant. A is 9, B is positive 6, C is 3. So here we go. Uh, B squared minus 4AC is what we're going to be using. That's the discriminant. I plug in these values. B squared will be 6 times 6. I'll go ahead and just do that arithmetic. 36. B is 6. B squared is 36 minus 4 times A, which is 9, times C, which is 3. That's 36 minus 36 times 3. Well, it doesn't really matter what it is. I can tell it's going to be negative because 36 minus a number that's bigger than 36 is going to give us a negative. So let's see what it is just for grins. 108. 36 minus 108 is negative 72. And because our discriminant is negative, we can say there are zero real solutions, no real solutions. That means there are two imaginary solutions. The reason there are no real solutions is because this is underneath the radical. If you have a negative value under the radical, then it's going to be imaginary. And uh, it would be plus or minus what makes two of them. Imaginary. Let's see if I can spell this correctly. And that's what I would be looking for. Oops. Spelled solutions incorrectly. That's our response. We set our quadratic equation equal to zero, determined the values of a, b, and c, plugged a, b, and c into the discriminant, found out that we got a negative value, so there are no real solutions because the discriminant is the part that's underneath the radical. And if you take the square root of a negative, we're going into the imaginary numbers. So there are no real solutions, meaning that there are two imaginary solutions. And again, if you forget that, it's right up here. If the discriminant is less than zero, that means it's negative. Then there are two imaginary solutions. So let's take a look at one more here. I look at this, I see negative m squared minus 4 minus 7 is equal to negative 4. Again, I have to set it equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 4 to both sides to set this equal to zero. And I have negative m squared 
minus 4m. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. This is equal to 0. Now I'm ready to use my discriminant. Remember, if I have negative m squared, that's just like negative 1m squared. I'm going to clean up that negative 1 a little bit. Negative 1 m squared. And here are our values of a, b, and c. We're just looking at them. a is negative 1. b is negative 4. Don't forget those minus signs. And c is negative 3. So we're going to plug these negative values into b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant. And this will give us negative 4 squared. It's imperative if you're going to use a calculator. Now we all know that negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. But if you just do this with your calculator, negative 4, and then square it, you know, tell it to square it, it will give you negative 16. Because what it will do is it will square it first. It will follow the order of operations. It will do the exponent first exponent first and then multiply by this implied negative 1. So if you want to square it with a calculator, make sure that you put it in parentheses. That way it will square the negative 4. This is negative 4 squared. This is negative 4 squared. Hear the difference in the way I'm saying it? This is negative 4 squared. This is negative 4 squared. And this is what we want. We want negative 4 multiplied by itself. So if you're using a calculator, make sure you put it in parentheses. And this will be minus 4 times a, what was a? That, that was negative 1. And c is negative 3. And this will equal whatever it equals. And let's see what we got. This is 16. Uh -oh. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Negative times negative times negative is negative. 4 times 1 times 3 is 12, so it will be negative 12. That's a positive 4. That means there are two real solutions. If I haven't made a mistake. It's early in the morning, and I make mistakes at the best of times. So here we go. Let's, uh, let's check my answers here. We, plugged everything into the discriminant. We found the number of solutions and the types of solutions. Let's see if I got them right. Number one is one real solution. Yay! Number two is two imaginary solutions. Yay! And number three is two real solutions. Yay! So there we go. That's how we do it. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff. We make sure that our quadratic equation is set equal to zero. Once it's set equal to zero, we have values of a, b, and c that we can plug into the discriminant. Plug them in, try not to make any arithmetic mistakes, and then if the discriminant is positive, there are two real solutions. If the discriminant is zero, there is one real solution. If the discriminant is less than zero, that's negative, there are two imaginary solutions. And that's what we'll be doing. Determining the number and types of real of solutions of quadratic equations, you can do this.